there. Our focus this evening, we're back, back to the beginning. So back to the feet, the calves, the shins, um, and we'll work through using massage balls. Um, stick rollers can work really well on calves. Even say our little handy glue stick that we use on our hands, we can use that on our shins if you have anything like that nearby that you wanna grab. And we'll start with just rolling the feet. If you prefer to just use your hands the whole time on the feet, you can do that as well. Otherwise, we'll roll for a little bit and then come back down and use our hands. So setting in a chair or maybe standing up, you can take that ball. I usually use a little bit of a smaller ball. So I have, you know, multiple sizes of the balls, the roll therapy balls. So the mid size works really well. I'll just choose a ball to roll. I also do have her smaller size, she has one size, Jill Miller, who does these roll therapy. She has a little bit smaller ball as well. I do like that one on my foot also. Feels kind of nice. And then if anybody got the little roll gum, I'm just, you know, I just show you everything. Don't feel like you have to have everything. Um, there's the little mini roll gum, which is like a little mini foam roller. That can feel really good on the foot too. Ugh. It's a little bit too much for me today. That one's a little bit um, harder than the ball. So I'm gonna stick, I think, with the smallest version of the ball, but really anything you have um, will work. If you do go, or at least people tell me, and I, I'm in agreement, but once you use the Jill Miller, the roll therapy, the roll model balls, the ones that we kind of linked for this class, like you just don't want to go back. They really are really, really good. And people that have used lacrosse balls and tennis balls will tell me that. Um, so the mid-size ball, I think they sell on Amazon for about 20 bucks. So not too, too expensive. Um, I don't know what these smaller ones are. And then the larger ones, I think they're on Amazon for around 35 bucks. They come in the little bag. I need to look and see what she sells the small ones for. And then she has a package where you can buy, you get like all the balls and you even get like a softer gorgeous ball, which we don't typically use in here, uh, but it can be really nice for rolling the abs. I sometimes will just lay over it in different positions as well. So welcome Evelyn, welcome Lorraine, welcome Amy, welcome Blair, welcome Mandy. So good to see you all. We are just starting with our feet. We'll stick to this, the same foot that we're on for maybe another minute and then we'll switch. If you're not using the balls today, you can already be using your hands to massage your feet. Or in a moment when we go to using our hands, you're welcome to keep using the balls. I like to just, you know, after it starts to loosen up a bit, apply a little bit more pressure, a little bit of kind of just turning my foot on the ball. It really works to loosen up those layers of fascia. Also, when we're right here, kind of in the heart of our foot, we have a marma point there. And so marma points are like acupressure points or maybe even kind of in some instances, the same as what we might call a trigger point. But there are these places along the nadis, which are kind of channels of energy, that energy moves through our bodies, our subtle body. And there are areas that can kind of get stuck. And so by massaging those areas, we really kind of help that internal energy flow. And the one on our foot, kind of the heart of the foot and the heart of the hand, blocked energy there can really kind of lead to feelings of anxiousness. So, you know, just some bonuses of why we roll our feet. All right, if you haven't switched, we'll go ahead and switch to the other side. I like to just pause for a moment because it feels so good to notice the difference between the two feet. And then we'll switch on over to the other foot. If you are just coming in, no worries. Just start with a foot and stay, you know, stay a little while, even when we come down to seated and start using our hands. Welcome, Krista. Welcome, Angela. And then of course our feet kind of correspond reflexology, right? To all parts of our body. So working in our feet, right? Can loosen our shoulders, it can loosen our back. Our body is so interconnected with these fascial sheaths. 
So the fascia kind of envelopes everything, just like as if we were like Spider-Man wearing kind of that thick suit. You know, if you pull up on the upper right corner, it affects the whole, the whole fascial system. So we'll take a few minutes on this foot. And then we'll use our, our fingers to kind of get into our toes a little bit more. I'll show you some different things. We'll do our calves, our shins. And if you can stay for yin or come back for yin, get some good stretching of the feet, the shins, the calves, and we'll also have time to get up into our hips and other parts of our body as well. Twisting. Now you may notice one foot feels tighter than the other foot. Just wherever you feel the tightest, stay there a little longer, give it a little more attention. And then always, always in this class, my friends, remember come roll anything you like. So after you come, especially if you come four weeks in a row, you're going to have gotten all the way through the body. You're going to know all the basics. And then you come, you do what you need to do. View it as kind of your workshop time. It's a time to learn, but it's a time to just, ah, this is on my calendar. It's my 30 minutes every week to massage and roll my body. Welcome, Kelsey. Oh, looks like she's still logging in. Right into the areas that might feel a little more tender. Like I just found a spot kind of right in front of my heel towards my inner arch. So you can see I'm just kind of pressing into it and just going right back and forth over it a few times. And some release. Back through the foot, coming into the heart of the foot. And then you are welcome to continue standing, rolling your feet, or if you'd like to come on down, have a seat, maybe use our hands for a little while, just to really get around the toes, kind of massage the toes, wiggle the toes. Of course, you can use your hands on your foot as a whole. I sometimes like to use my knuckles. We do this a lot in the beginning of the barefoot conditioning class. But if the arch feels pretty good, you can just spend a couple of minutes on the toes. And then maybe also on the top of the foot. So I like to kind of take my thumbs and work between the metatarsals on the top of the foot. I like to just also work with some spreading. And I'm just kind of pulling. You know, it sounds like we're doing something really big, but we're not just gently pulling the bones away from each other, creating some space. Back to the toes, you can massage in between the toes. Do one finger at a time, or if it feels okay to you, you can take the four fingers, pressing the pads of the fingers into between the toes, kind of massaging in, spreading the feet, creating that space. And, you know, working some circular motion. So I have my fingers between the toes so that I have that spreading action. And I'm just circling and pumping and moving around. This really helps with the lymphatic system, pumping the lymph that doesn't pump on its own. It doesn't have its own um, system like the circulatory system will pump no matter what. So really working in and around the foot helps move that lymphatic system up and out. And then maybe a little twisting of the foot, just kind of loosening between all the bigger bones, the cuneiform bones in the arch of the foot. Just a few times and you can just kind of rub the foot out, give it a little heat. And then we'll take a couple of minutes on the other foot, getting into the toes and repeating some of those things that we just did. Maybe 
massaging between the toes or placing a finger between each toe or just doing one at a time. Spreading action, maybe massaging in between the bones on top of the foot. And I know it seems like I'm going really fast. Don't feel like you have to like jump to everything as quickly as I'm doing it. I just like to give you ideas and suggestions, right? And again, over time, it becomes, you kind of get this, right? You're like, okay, I know everything she's gonna say already. You just go with what feels and works best for you. Who else has joined us? Welcome Lorraine, welcome Blair. There's Kelsey, Kathleen. Good to see you all coming in. Again, maybe some circular, some pumping. Which will start to loosen up the ankle. So we're going to move up into the calves next, and the shins. A little twisting of the foot. And a little heat rubbing. So of course you can stay on your feet longer if you like. Kind of rules of thumb you know, five to 10 minutes per area. So we spent about five minutes per area. So of course you could spend a little longer or we'll move into our calves. Different options for the calves, right? Stick rollers work nicely. You could use a stick roller. You could use the like couple of balls in the bag and place both under the calf and roll here. So if your calves are pretty tight, I sometimes like to do this. You could go to a single ball of whatever size. It's gonna be a little more intense. Smaller the ball, the more the intensity as well. That's why like two balls is gonna be less intense than one. And as you go to single balls, the smaller the ball, the more intense that's gonna be. And so those are both ways, using the stick roller, rolling the ball here, or I love to take the balls onto the calf and kind of take that smash Right, where you set back either all the way down in child's pose or you can stay up. And I just I usually use two balls in a bag this way because they balance really well and you can just rock side to side. You do get a little bonus hamstring massaging when you do it this way, but this is not the only option. So maybe if you're newer, try several things. If you've been coming for a while and you always do it the same way, maybe try it a different way to see what you like. Different days, different things feel right. Welcome, Sarah. And I just, you know, move the ball every, I don't know, it could be 10 seconds, it could be 30 seconds, it could be every minute. Just for what it feels like to you. You can also do it from here. You know, I don't get as deep of a massage when I kind of squeeze and hold here, but some people have said they like that. I like the smash, or I like to use one ball and extend the leg out. You can also add a little pressure from the top. So really getting a smash in if you want a deeper massage. And you will occasionally get a little bruising, um, but the, we don't really want to be pushing hard to the point where we're finding that we're bruising a lot. You know, if you've got some really tight muscles, you, you might get a bruise here and there, but if you find you're really like bruising yourself, you're probably putting too much into it. I know if you go to like a professional, um, a Rossi doctor, some different types of deep tissue, you will get some bruising. Right, and you know, that is between you and the doctor. And but here, you know, this is more preventative self-care. So I don't I don't want you harming yourself, hurting yourself. So a bruise here and there, no worries. Sometimes I'll hear people say, Wow, I just get you know, black and purple, the like the fascia blaster things that you see, like they advertise on, on TV. I have one. It's kind of neat. I don't know. I don't really use it very much. Um, but people will say, oh, I just, my leg, I just bruised my entire leg up. I, I don't, we don't want to be doing that ourselves. 
So I had to buy one. I've just seen the little fascia blasters. I had to buy one because I didn't know what they do. I don't, I don't know. I like the balls. <laughs> and the balls are less expensive, but you know, everybody likes, you know, use what works for you. Keep me about another minute on whichever calf you're on and then we'll switch to the other one. Try, try different, try different ways. Some people really, really love stick rollers. I don't use it as much. Again, I got it because you know I like to try all the kind of the different things on the market. Um, I love just using the balls. I did get one of those little ferret guns. I think I was telling you about it. I bought it for like my husband and family for, for Christmas. I do use that a lot. Feels nice. Nice. And then if you haven't switched caps, we'll just go ahead and switch to the other side. So again, you know, using the stick roll, using the balls, thumbs work really great on the calves too. So if you don't even have any balls or equipment today, thumbs can really work awesome on the calves. Really any part of our own body that we can reach, we can use our hands. So just in case you have not signed up for Mindful Moments and you want to, we won't turn you away, um, but we do start Tuesday. So if you would like to join, you know, kind of last call, last call, we had a couple of people reach out today um, and ask if they could join. And of course, of course, of course, we will let you in, um, but do try to join today if you're going to, um, because I have like three emails that have already gone out to people and I will send them all to you at once and you'll feel overwhelmed <laughs> by all the emails that you're getting. No, seriously, it's totally fine. But let us know if you would like to. We start with our live sessions Tuesday. Let's work around on our second calf. And your leg can be extended. You can be in the smash area. Have a little more intensity from the top if you like. But it's not about no pain, no gain. I mean, if you kind of scale the one to 10, nines and tens, if you're like, oh, that's like a nine out of a 10 or a 10 out of a 10, back off. Try a different format, you know, try a different way. Maybe if you're smashing, maybe extend the leg. Maybe if you're using one ball, go to two. We want it to be pleasant where you can continue to breathe. There definitely will be some sensation, but I want you to describe it. If you have to describe it as a hurt, right? A hurt so good so that you, you know, it's like, yeah, there's a sensation, but I can tell like it's doing, it's doing a good thing. So right here, I have a little knot, and not a nine or a 10, but probably an eight. And so I'm going to kind of stick with that for a moment. Up and down, side to side. We want to think about rolling all different directions. So kind of a side to side and up and down. And then if you're using a single ball, you can oftentimes even do circular motions. Again, I may even just take my thumb to get right into that one spot. And then we're going to start to move kind of into the shin and the ankles. Again, feel free to stick with the calves if you're like, oh, I need a little more time on my calves. Otherwise, we'll come more into the front of the leg. A lot of times here, I will just use my thumbs because it's really easy to reach. So we're getting more through the shin side. I will use a stick roller or you could take the ball. Now, as much, anytime we can get skin on skin, con, you know, ball on skin or thumb on skin, you can move the pant leg out of the way, it can be very beneficial. This is where I will sometimes use like the little glue stick. And so it becomes a little mini, mini stick roller. Up and down. And then I'll even around the ankles, if you have, 
see if I can find my little gua sha. I chunk, I chunk my things around everywhere and then I can't find them. Or my kids, my daughter comes to steal them. Anyway, I can't seem to find the actual gua sha. That a little, I have a little wrench, a little tool wrench that can work as well. I sometimes like to gua sha down around the ankles. So we're kind of moving in an upward pattern, but you can go in these little, just real gentle, little back and forth. And I like to do that a lot right around the ankle where there's not as much like muscle. I don't want to press real hard into the bone. And so an actual, the little gua sha things, you might gua sha your face, or I just always keep these little um, wrenches. They're like, I don't know, a buck or something at Home Depot. And it's very similar to the Graston tool. There's a tool called the Graston tool. It looks very similar to a wrench. That can be really nice around the ankle. You might kind of feel or hear, but the only way I can describe it as is crunchiness. And that is some of that tight, crunched up, crumbled up fascia. And then we also can come underneath the shin bone. So again, I'm kind of talking you through all this. You don't have to go this fast. And if you're a little bit newer and it seems faster, you just get a little bit each time you come. And then after, you know, several times we're like, oh, okay, yeah, I get what's going on. So underneath our shin bone, we have our posterior tibialis. So it's kind of like between the calf muscle and the shin bone. So I typically will just use my thumb and kind of come under the shin bone and massage up under the bone. I will sometimes work my elbow in there or a ball and kind of work with the ball also. If you have kind of the flexibility to get the elbow in there, I really like the elbow. And then of course, anytime, you know, use lotion or a little bit of oil, um, that can make this a little more pleasant. If I just do this on my own and, you know, it's fine to get all oily, then I will use that. But sometimes if I'm teaching and then I don't want oil all over my yoga mat, because then when I'm doing yoga, then I slip on my mat. And so feel free to work kind of anywhere along that. You can be more on the shin, posterior tibialis. If you were really kind of liking the gua sha and you have one of those tools, a little wrench. You can also use um, like a butter knife, but not, not even the sharp end of the butter knife, right? It's the other end of the butter knife. So in ancient, you know, original, like in China, they'd use like a chicken bone. I mean, there wasn't, we didn't have to go buy um, fancy grass and uh, tools, um, which if you look at Amazon, you're like the Graston tool, Graston, G-R-A-S-T-O-N, they can be quite pricey. You get a lot of the same benefit. I'm just going to scrape up there. If you're ever spraying your ankle, definitely might feel a little crunchiness. And then we'll switch over to the other foot, our other leg. Same thing, maybe starting with the shin, the post anterior tibialis, so that outer side. Using your fingers, using a ball, using a glue stick. I didn't show you on the first side, just sometimes I forget to show something, but you can also take the ball, you know, and kind of come into the seated position. Just the ball underneath. I have shown this in the past. That can feel really nice. And so there's not one exact, like one exact and only way to do things.
little spots that are a little more tender out there. So we've got about four minutes left. So we'll just work this leg. If you want to go back to any anything else we've worked on today or any other part of your body, feel free. And if you want to just kind of keep rolling right through the transition into yin, I'll log you out at the end of the class here in a bit. So you don't have to worry about that. If you can come to yin, we'll get some foot stretching, ankle stretching, calf, shin stretching, and then we'll also get some legs and other parts of our body. Make sure to stretch the parts we rolled. Sometimes you'll find these little trigger points. Like I just found one right here and I can kind of feel, I can feel that all the way down. Not like the tingly, like I'm on a nerve, but I can feel like the trigger point of the muscle even coming down around the ankle. Which lets me know, oh, that is a tight, tight little spot. I wanna work and see if I can get some looseness you get it to loosen up because my left ankle has kind of been bothering me tight. And I think I just found the spot that that's coming from. <laughs> so sometimes you'll notice that. So it's like the ankle has been where I've been feeling kind of that, you know, not pain, pain, but a little bit of soreness. And I think it's coming from right here on my shin, my anterior tibialis. And of course, Again, you can get a little scraping down around the ankles. You know, use your thumbs down around the ankles. We like to do a little scraping. And then you can get into the posterior tibialis underneath that shin bone. So in our couple of remaining minutes, working around. Sometimes we'll do the gua sha kind of right here on the top of the foot ankle. I don't really like to do it down by my toes. You can, but for me, that feels too sensitive, but a little bit higher and right through here. Sometimes I'll get along the sides of the foot. One thing I do like about the wrench, as you can see, right? So it has that like, like a wrench. And so this little small part right here, works really nicely to kind of get right around the base of the ankle, whereas it might be a little harder to kind of make the whole wrench fit in there. And a gua sha tool, kind of the pointier end of the gua sha tool can get in there. Sometimes there are little nerves in there, so if it's just agitating, just move on. And then we have just about a minute to go. All right, my friends. Well, thank you so much for joining me for release and restore. Feel free to continue to roll um, in between these two classes, or if you aren't able to make it to the end, but you want to keep rolling for a few more minutes, I will log you out so you don't have to get up and do anything at your computer. And I'll see some of you in just a few minutes for yin. Bye, everybody.